when I am almost, almost 80 years old and I have been known for the kind of outward bound focus that I, I thought that education and nature should play in education. Um, mountaineering is one of the areas, trekking, rock climbing, orienteering, forestry conservation, wildlife conservation and wildlife study, camera work and filming and photography. All these are outward bound activities re related. So I've always felt that, okay, the Himalayas are very vast. The forests and mountains and rivers of India are fairly widespread. But everything is limited. And the population is keen to have access to and are aspiring to be part of the greater world where, where they can grow up into not only academic clusters but also into wild areas. Now, at a serious level of mountain climbing, high mountain climbing in the Himalaya, we have got virtually all the high mountains of the Himalaya have been climbed. I can't think of any other mount, any mountain. There was one I remember, Negi Kangsang, which we sent from the Indian Mountaineering Foundation. We climbed that also to make sure that the Indians climbed it. So every mountain has been climbed. Now, what are the young people going to do in terms of exploration? Take Everest. It's crowded. There's no, no, no more Everest. There's only one Everest. There are Everests of the mind. And that is what we want to target. Recently, there are some Dune School boys and others who went on an expedition to Mount Everest with the organized trekking systems of Jamling Tenzing, the son of Tenzing, who was also a student at St. Paul's School, Darjeeling. And um, they were part, they got involved in the earthquake at the ice fall on Camp 2 and Camp 3 and survived with a lot of help from helicopters and coming down with from a lot of other rescue teams. That was good adventure. That was good excitement for them. But that is not the way you want to do it because that was very dangerous and we did have casualties. I remember a girl who actually died on this ice fall, I think. She was one of the members. So what we want to do is to have calibrated, monitored excitement, danger and adventure, which means that you should not have to know everything about every mountain already properly recorded and documented so that everyone knows who has climbed which mountain by which route from which spur, which ridge and up which couloir. In a word, there should be a self restraint on publicity about climbing of the Himalayan peaks and exploration of the Himalayan valleys. Self-restraint. I'm not saying that you should ban it, but there should be an attitude towards unclimbing the mountains. Everest has been climbed a thousand times. Why must we know that a thousand people have already climbed it? We go up there, it's a new mountain. I remember Lionel Terre, a Frenchman. I met him in Lyon in 1963, 62, after Everest, when I'd come back from Mount Everest, and I was in hospital in Lyon for frostbite. And he said, L'Everest n'intéresse plus personne. No one is interested in Mount Everest. That was 1962, a Frenchman saying so, and he was very wise. Because at that time, mountains had not been climbed. Between 62 and 19, uh, 2015, I think every mountain has been climbed. So let's uh, restrain the publicity binge on what has been climbed. We can record it and you can have talks and lectures and people can talk about it and you can even have books on it. But the kind of garish publicity about mountain climbing, you know, pitons, pitons and tom-toms, um, all the time, I, I don't want to take names and I don't want to take examples, but there should be a self-imposed limitation through unclimbing, an attitude of unclimbing the mountains. You can't unclimb the mountains, but you can certainly 
keep them fresh. And the way to do that is not to make big publicity stunts out of them. No, I, I've suggested we must not erase records. The records should be there, documented. But they should not be the plaything of government servants and ambitious people who are not interested in nature or mountains or forests or tigers or snow leopards. They are interested in getting promotions by saying, hey, I climb Mount Everest. You make me a commander. You make me a brigadier. Now, they, that was India has been doing that, but the British didn't do it. They did it very modestly. And the Europeans were even more modest about this because they, for them it was sheer adventure. And the Americans, of course, have again been very correct about this. We in India tend to make it too publicity conscious and too promotion conscious. As though something is something wonderful. If a person has climbed a mountain, he must be wonderful. Not necessarily. It depends on his integrity, upon his character, upon his various other abilities. So I don't say we should uh, abolish, ban, or take away the documentation on, or record of mountains. It should be there in the libraries, but not necessarily in public fora or in government systems.